One. On three. One, two, three. What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of True Crime and Cocktails. We're so glad that you're here. As always, I am your host, Lauren Ash. And as always, I am joined by my co-hostess with the most S, Christy Oxborough. How you feeling? I'm feeling great. Fantastic. Yeah. I have a wild update <laughs> since last week. Yeah. yeah. So if you listened to Elon Musk part one, which if you're listening to this, which is Elon Musk part two, I, I highly suggest you go back to part one. Um, yeah. In the beginning of the show, in the banter, in the banter bit, yeah. I brought up to Christy that I had recently had a conversation with my lovely boyfriend about one of my favorite films of all time, The Terminator, yeah. and my theory about John Connor sending Kyle Reese back in time, of course, Kyle Reese yeah. being his father. Um, my theory was that he told Kyle Reese what his mission was. Sure. That he had a sex objective. We don't hear this in the movie, but this is the subtext mm -hmm. that I always believed was the case. I communicated uh -huh. this to my boyfriend. He was aghast. I talked, told Christy she was shocked. Anyway, so I, I understand that my theory is perhaps not um, really well liked or received. Now, sure. here's the update. My sweet boyfriend got us tickets to go to a screening of The Terminator. Since Amazing. then, since last week's record to this week's record, and uh, it's the 40 year anniversary. Wait a minute, old. Um, <laughs> and so they're doing these screenings, and so I was like, "This is the greatest." I've never, obviously, I've never seen it on the big screen. It is, it's sure. again, it's one of my favorite movies. I watched it on an old VHS tape, tape from TV, so many times as a kid. Yeah. Now, because I only had watched it tape from TV, let's just say I didn't know there was a sex scene until I was an adult. <laughs> anyway. Oh yeah, that's that's a shock. It was when you, when you go from a a version of something that you're so used to. Yes, and then all of a sudden it's like, ha, ha, great news! There's tits. Like yeah. you had no idea. Guess again. Yeah. Um. So we go to this. Uh, we we go to this. Uh, showing of Terminator. I get my popcorn. It was at one of the theaters. You can get a wine. I was in heaven we sit down we're waiting for uh the show to start um <laughs> canadian sweetheart george strombolopoulos strolls in we said hello oh. um so again it was just it was there was so many stars aligning but then this is the moment that dear listeners you're not going to believe this we're sitting waiting for the movie to start a woman mm -hmm. comes out she's like hey welcome thank you so much for being here just a reminder when the show is over, stay in your seats because we'll be doing a Q&A with writer of the film, Gail Ann Hurd. Now, of course, The Terminator was, was written by James Cameron and Gail Ann Hurd. Gail Ann Hurd is also like a legend when it comes to producing uh, sure. movies, et cetera. So I was excited just because she's a legend and I wanted to hear her speak about this movie. But then I was excited because I was like, for the first time in my life, I'm at a Q&A, and I have a Q. <laughs> you did? You did. And it was just one of those moments where I was like, because there's been times before where we'll do something on the podcast, and then it, like, something manifests the next week. Like, something directly kind of happens. Yeah. Um, this used to happen on Superstore, too. We'd, like, do something in an episode, and then two weeks later, it would happen in real life. Very strange. Uh, but this, I was just, was so wild, because we truly had no idea that this was a part of what we were paying for. We were so excited. So in my mind, I was like, if they open it up to the audience, I'm throwing my hand in the air. I'm going to ask her the question that I'm sure she doesn't want to answer. Um, here's the thing. They did not open it up to audience questions, unfortunately. She just answered the question without even being asked. What are the chances? What are the chances? I love this. So she was talking about the movie. She was talking about the origins. She told some great stories, by the way. For example, James Cameron and her had taken Arnold Schwarzenegger to lunch. Now, there was a famous story that people have ta talked about where Arnold Schwarzenegger was originally supposed to play Kyle Reese. This Gross. is a fact. Get out. This is a fact. And at this lunch meeting, Schwarzenegger couldn't stop talking about the Terminator. Like, had so many thoughts and, like, loved it. That, that eventually, James Cameron just said, Feels like you're really responding to the Terminator character. 
And I guess he had done Conan the Barbarian. He didn't want a mostly silent role. He kind of had to think about it, but it turned out anyway that, yes, he ended up agreeing to do it. And they, of course, got Michael Bean to play Kyle Reese. Now, I knew that story because I'm, I'm a nerd, but and I <laughs> looked up a lot of stuff about Terminator. But what I didn't sure. know that Gail Ann talked about at this uh, Q&A, she was like, tells that same story. But then she adds, she's like, but here's the thing. We were at this lunch and we were at a restaurant and we didn't really know how we were going to pay for it. We were just like really excited that Arnold Schwarzenegger was willing to meet. So we kept waiting for him to go, but he wouldn't leave. Like we needed him to leave so we could try and talk to the staff about how we were going to sort this out. <laughs> and at restaurants here, they close in the afternoon. So it's open for lunch and then it closes for a few hours and it reopens for dinner. So she sure. said that they started putting the chairs on the tables. They start like, and they're the only ones in the place mm -hmm. until eventually they were kind of like, oh my God, what are we going to do? And I guess the, the waiter came and there was this kind of pause and this awkwardness. And Arnold Schwarzenegger said, you can't pay the bill, can you? And they were like, no. And they kind of came clean that it was like, we don't really have the money and blah, 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 whatever. And he laughed and he was like, this happened to me once. Uh, I got it. And so he picked up the check and then he still did the movie and they were shocked that he was like so generous. Um, say what you will about him. I thought that was very charming. Well, that was a very charming story. Yeah. So I've really buried the lead here, but it's, I'm basically talking like clickbait. Like I'm talking right now, like you're trying to <laughs> scroll to the recipe. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So here's the thing. It was early in the Q and A apropos of nothing. I don't even remember how she got here. It was very organic, but something was said and she's answering the question. And then she just said, and I committed as much of this to memory as possible because I was like, I cannot wait to tell the listeners about this wild update. She said, the biggest problem we had with the movie was the logic about John Connor sending his own father back. And so I'm like, okay, now we're getting into it. And then she said, and we kind of just hoped nobody would think about it that hard. And then she well, added, Gail, I am. <laughs> she goes, but I also recognize him in a room full of people that absolutely have thought about it hard. And so then she kind of moved on from it. But there was another reference being made too to like the romance element, et cetera. Here's what I take from that. What I take from that is a couple of things. I think she's referring to all of the logic surrounding that whole thing, which encompasses my question and my point. Sure. Um, there's also, of course, the paradox that it's like, what would have happened? what timeline are we seeing? Like if we start to break into the like logic of the time travel and like, how did this happen the first time? Because in order for there to like, John Connor would have to exist before he could send his father back for the first time, which doesn't really work out. Right. Sure. But there's lots of time travel things in different multiverses and whatever that I'm sure can uh, excuse that. But here's how I interpreted what she said. There was no intention. So, your guess is as good as mine. I think our interpret everyone's interpretations are valid because it wasn't as though they had this big plan from the beginning that she said she literally said our biggest problem was uh, was the John Connor sending his own father back. We just hoped people wouldn't think about it that hard. Because again, <laughs> and what I think falls under that umbrella is my point exactly is is John Connor gonna leave it to chance? Because a lot of people are saying, well, he just, you know, he told him that this was his his mission was to protect her. And then he fell in love with the photo. And then one thing led to another. I understand that John Connor has the information from the tapes that Sarah Connor made where she she names Kyle Reese. So we know that John knows. Sure. But I just feel like he's got to be clear. I, I just don't know that I buy that it was like, that John Connor was like little Mr. Cupid. Like, well, I'll just let you figure this thing out. Like, <laughs> I, I don't buy it. Mm -hmm. It's war. Mm -hmm. They're soldiers. He's saying to him, this is what you got to do, man. Get your cock in my mother, soldier. Yes, soldier. <laughs> You're on a sex mission. Okay. okay. Um, now, listen, and then upon rewatching it, I'll also say this. You know, obviously, Sarah Connor is kind of the one who initiates in the moment. You know, she kind of brings up the thing. It also, I, I was watching it through a new lens because I'm nitpicking this whole thing. And it did bring me a lot of joy the, the 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 literal the way the movie goes, she says, is the Terminator? I'm bastardizing the exact words, but she says along the lines of, is the Terminator going to 
eventually find us? And Kyle Reese goes, yeah, probably. And then she goes, is there someone special back home? So what I like about this is that the Sarah Connor character <laughs> has, has literally basically said, are we pretty much going to die? Yeah. You want to do it? <laughs> like she's like, I got to try and get, I got to try and get some before I potentially die. And that I really respect. Oh, yeah. Especially, I mean, Kyle Reese is handsome. Oh, sure. So I sure. understand that that might have been a mission of hers from the start. Yeah. So yeah. And I maybe get that. she hadn't been thinking about it. And look, do I think that they were in some form of trauma bond? Of course. Do <laughs> I think that, it? you know, people are talking about like whether it's love or not love. And I'm like, I guess we maybe just have different definitions of love. I think I just have a hard time with like it was the greatest love we've ever known we had a lifetime of love in a few hours like i'm like did you or are you just saying that to kind of pad this for your son like i i mean you know i may or may not have in uh university written for a uh pop culture like media sort of class written a full essay on <laughs> the terminator being the greatest love story of all time listen <laughs> okay <laughs> Look, yeah. Do I, yeah, I mean, yeah, this is I my own it, shit. I'm projecting. I'm projecting. I'm sure. Look, I think we all just interpret it the way that we want it to be. And that's what I think Gail Ann was really getting at. I think that that yeah. was her largest point was that it was like, we didn't want people to think about it that hard. And to that, I say, I'm not saying, dear listeners, I was right. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is we all were right. <laughs> And great yeah. art means different things to different people. It's true. I also am always for any sort of great art that will uh, cause you to use the words paradox and sex objective. Although you did also say sex mission. Um, yeah. Which uh, I can't decide which of those I like more, but uh, I chose to write them all down. Just uh, that's a good thing to have yeah. in the mental data bank as it were yeah the Absolutely. sex objective or the sex mission yeah oh i do think i like sex objective sex your sex objective uh, your object sex no sex objective should you sextive to... you're obsextive oh, okay i mean <clears throat> Wouldn't James Bond be considered kind of a sex objective, sex mission type? Because he was always rolling in the hay with somebody. Most oh. of them dealt with, wasn't there always, a? he was always stopped with a woman like at the beginning and it, it like got interrupted and then he'd go on his mission. But he always fucked someone on that mission, didn't he? I think that was a part of it. Yeah. Well... <laughs> This also ties into another movie I recently rewatched, which I do a few times a year, which is, of course, Face Off. And I uh, shudder at the the sad short life of uh, undercover agent Winters, who I will remind you is the flight attendant on the private plane who who cast Troy. <laughs> she sucked his tongue yeah he's like i'll yeah. let you suck my tongue or whatever it was and then he shot her and threw her out of the plane and to that i say what do we see men undercover james bond oh he's just he's just sowing oats all the time it's part of his job what's he supposed to do right meanwhile winters had to suck that gross man's tongue and then he was killed i understand that i do not want what i'm about to say to be up there and oh, be recorded no. for the people. Yeah. If Castor Troy, not Nicolas Cage, specifically Castor Troy, yeah, had asked like a 19-year-old me, I would have done it. I actually <laughs> might have asked before he did. <laughs> Well, here's the thing I got to remind you. Castor yeah. Troy isn't asking. He's telling. That's the hot part for him is he's not going to tell. <laughs> he's not going to. He He's going to tell you to do something. 
he's not going to ask because asking is just going to uh, soften his boner. I'm so sorry. You know, I'm shocked we got there, but Emma, I think this is maybe the first time we've said boner on the show. Wow. There, I should have boner. I should have had, it's our first boner. I should have had balloons in a net just ready to drop because <laughs> it was only a matter of time. The dust that would come down with those <laughs> balloons that have been up there for four years. And for some reason, all blank sign plays. I don't well, know. I, like <laughs> I could only get it pre-programmed with, with something for New Year's Eve. <laughs> I mean, well, the balls are going to drop. <laughs> no. <laughs> nice. Oh, uh, uh, I'm a horror show of a human. No, not at all. Not at all. Um, but listen, that was my big update. That's 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 the highlight. Those those are the news. That's the news I got for you. Well, I couldn't be happier. I yeah. love this. I love yeah. that the universe did that for us. Um I love I love <laughs> I don't have to have something that's like similar, but universally speaking. Yeah. Now, my husband and I recently, we, during lunch, we like a, we like a program. Yeah. We like to watch a show, but our lunch has been cut short because I have to get kids places and all of this during summer. So we're, we were looking for a half hour show and I don't know if he had ever seen it or not, but we ended up rewatching the class. I'm obsessed with it. It only lasted for a season. Um, it, it came out in 2006 um, and the biggest obsession I have on that show is John Bernthal. Oh, sure. He plays this character called Duncan, who is just like the sweetest dummy in the world. Like, he's just such a genuinely nice guy. And then people say things to him and he just goes, yeah, like, that's just who he is. And I'm so uh, unbelievably in love with this character. And so there's like, a love whole like will they won't lay throughout this season and i just like the amount of times every episode that i would go i just love him so much like i would just constantly say i love him no matter what he would say and so i was like this is how i want john bernthal always because that was my first viewing of him and then he the next time i saw him he was in walking dead wildly different character and then it feels since then he's gotten kind of more of a dark brooding sort of a character because, I mean, he played uh, he played a mobster. He played. Um, oh, God. What was, what's the movie I'm thinking? Oh, he was Punisher, I think. Oh, and so right. he always he's always playing like these super dark roles. And so I'm like, I want a movie or another TV show where he's this Duncan character where he like, I don't need him to be the exact character duncan i want him to be that same sweet lovable dum-dum yeah who is so in love with this girl that he actually at one point says to her like i love you so much it hurts and my husband turns to me and goes oh my god is that where you got it from because years ago when we first got together i and i was like do you do would you say you love me so much it hurts and he was like no and I was offended. I yeah. was like, I can't believe you. And he was like, that's not a thing. Like, love is not painful. And I just wouldn't let it go. And so now it's been the ongoing joke for the majority of our relationship of, um, like, anytime I'll be like, oh, I love you. And he's like, yeah, so much it hurts. And, like, he just wouldn't let it go. And seeing that, I was like, I think that's where I got it from because Duncan is so in love with this woman and it's just a whole thing. But I'm like, I desperately want another I, I need another fix of right. him being that same kind of dopey character because I love it. Um, and I knew it was a different character, but I, I ended up uh, starting uh, American Gigolo. Oh. The the TV series that is very dark and gritty. Oh. And, and he's the gigolo. And I'm going to tell you, I'm pretty sure he works out all day. Mm. Like it's... I, I caught my breath when I saw the first um, 
steamy scenes, we'll say, from that oh. show. I was like, yeah, okay. But there was a moment where someone said something to him and he like blushed and did like a, yeah. And I was like, there he is. So he's deep in there somewhere and that's okay. But I was like, I'm going to keep watching that because it's a thing to watch. Um, that's, that's smut reader, Christy talking. But we decided we were going to watch a little show called Date Night. Uh, Steve Carell, Tina Fey. It's a movie we've enjoyed multiple times a year uh, for years. There's a small scene where Steve Carell is like in his at, at his job talking to these young people trying to like because he's an accountant. He's trying to like explain to them about money. The guy is John Bernthal doing the exact character where he's like he's like, this is how much money you have. And the guy's like the John Bernthal character is like, we're going to like blow it on this vacation. We're going to do this. And he's like, maybe you should save it. Do something smart with it. And the John Bernthal guy just kind of goes, I, so I could save it or I could go do it on a beach. Yeah, I think I'm going to pick that one. And I was just like, let him be in this whole movie. He was not. But it felt like the universe was like, here you go. Remember, question, he's in this. Yes. Question for you. Do you know what night you watched Date Night? Um. Well, let me pull up the... Uh, the movie spreadsheet that we have. Yes. Because, yeah, we do that. Mm -hmm. It's the easiest way. It's the easiest of course. way. Date night. Uh, July 27. Ah. Which Here's what's wild. I couldn't tell you what day of the week that was. That was a Saturday. That Here's was what's Saturday. wild. Yeah. We randomly watched date night last week. No kidding. I believe for us it was on the 25th. But yeah, it was completely random, a random choice. That's wild. Yeah. Yeah, we don't normally well, that one specifically uh according to my spreadsheet, <laughs> what's more romantic than a spreadsheet? Nothing. Not much. Um according to my spreadsheet, that was we actually did a date that night. So our date night was watching date night. Mm. Um and I because I think it is one of our kids was not home. And then it was just like, there's only so many for dinner. And then all of a sudden it's like, oh, I could easily rope two of them into just macaroni and cheese. And if I just wait a little later, then I get a funner supper than that. So, okay. And the second you go, hey, you just want mac and cheese for supper? They get so excited. So then everybody's winning. And then we need a movie, but then it's a, a mutual pick which we usually back and forth so the mutual pick takes a long time to decide and we just randomly ended up with date night wow yeah wild yeah that's i mean out, out of all the movie options and that movie is older right that's yeah. like what 20 and i think it's 2010 well here's the thing i am a little bit of a rascal uh who falls asleep on the couch a lot so sure. at one point i had fallen asleep i woke up my boyfriend put it on and then i started watching it right away so i did watch the whole thing but uh it was his pick i guess you could say because i again sure. i was out um yeah i'm really good at that i'm really good at falling asleep on the couch anytime anytime of day or night i really respect that yeah i'm usually doing something while the movie's on because mm. I usually have a laptop and there's either like an online shopping or I'm like trying to find something dealing with notes uh, for an episode, something like that. Date night, I don't get the laptop out. Right. Date night is specifically like the attempt of like focus on the show and conversing with each other. Um, I did double check. It was 2010. Mm. So a movie from 14 years ago and I think it was cho I think we ended up choosing it because a few days before that we watched Game Night mm -hmm. uh, with Jason Bateman and uh, the lovely Rachel McAdams. Um, always such a good time, and we wanted something with like a similar vibe. And what are you getting with a similar vibe? Well, date night. 
Yeah. Plus the whole Mark Wahlberg uh, storyline in that movie is amazing. Oh, yeah. Fun story about Game Night. Yeah. I had an audition for that movie. There's a like a receptionist character, I want to say. Chelsea Peretti. Yeah. So I was in the audition, doing the audition. And then I heard a great commotion in the hall. And then it was that they had booked Chelsea Peretti for the role I was auditioning for at that same time. That's a dick move. Oh, that happens all the time. Uh, but yeah, I remember oh. I like came out. I, 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 I don't think they interrupted my audition, but I came out and then the girl like was like, we got Chelsea Peretti. And then I was like, I looked at her and she was like, eh. <laughs> it was like, oh yeah. my God. Cool. What fun. I'm what so fun. sorry. Yeah, you know, it's an interesting part of the industry, you know, like it's an interesting part of the job is that they'll often go out to people like they'll make offers to people for roles, but then they'll still audition at the same time, which feels like a flawed kind of system. It feels like a waste of so many people's time, doesn't it? Yeah. And also like false hope. Well, they don't care about us. That That's no. the last thing on their minds, obviously. Um, but I'd I never I, sleep again. Like, yeah, if I couldn't do it as that per the person. If I knew someone's auditioning in front of me and I knew that we had booked like or that we had at least put out feelers to somebody else, I they would know based on my face. I would just be sitting there like going, I, I don't you're so great. Yeah. God, here's 10 bucks. Get a Starbies. You know what I mean? Like, I I just couldn't do it. It would yeah. make me ill. Yeah. Ugh. I guess for me, it's like, if you're going to offer it, then, and then you can't get the person you want, then have the auditions. But I guess maybe yeah. that doesn't make sense timing wise. So it's like, they got to have, they got to have everything moving at the same time, I guess. It still feels like shit though. Oh, it feels like your soul is leaving your body in the moment. But you know, I'm, I'm just trying to see all sides, I guess. Of course, of course. Of course. I wouldn't have lasted a week in the industry is the is the point because yeah. i that i'd be like then what are we even doing what was the point like i do remember when i was much younger i was in toronto and i had a call back for a commercial and there is this phenomenon in that scenario also where you you have a legitimate shot at the commercial like it's they're not going to go to someone a star usually or anything like that um but there's a phenomenon that happens where you can just tell when they've already decided who they're going to cast. Like they're not oh. interested. They're not paying attention. They're on their phones. Like, but mm -hmm. you have to still give 110% into a room of people that aren't looking at you or listening to you or interested in your living meat carcass being in front of them. So I remember I was in a real punchy mood, I guess. And I went in and you're in a group. And it was exactly that energy. It was so obvious that they had just decided that they found the people. And so we did our audition. And it's not like we turned them around and they looked up or whatever. Like no one looked at us. No one acknowledged us. Everyone's on their phones. Everyone's whatever. And they were like, uh, the, the casting director was like, okay, thank you. And then I couldn't help myself. And I just turned and I went, not interested, huh? Cool. Cool stuff, guys. <laughs> and it did get a massive laugh. And I think the reason it got a massive laugh was because they were like, yeah, you're right. <laughs> we're not interested. We've already cast this 20 minutes ago. You know, it's uh... so that was like a very that saying that was like Katniss Everdeen firing that arrow into yeah. the into like a pig or something up where nobody was paying attention to her. There you go. Now, what I want to say is that it led to something like me saving a bunch of people a la Katniss Everdeen. But in the in reality, sure. it, I don't know that it led to anything. Maybe I was maybe those people remembered me. Maybe they were like, she's got chutzpah. Maybe there was oh. another commercial I booked later that I didn't realize that me being a mouthy brat at the time was was setting me up for. Who knows? Who I love knows? you say mouthy brat. I'm like, oh, that's the that was the nicest thing. You could have said, I would not have been nice. Although I would have probably just started like saying awful things in the middle of it, realizing, just to no, see. yeah, yeah, 
Like, is anybody paying attention? No. Yeah. Well, oh God. You know, it takes a million good ones. No, that's not it. It takes a million bad ones for one good one. I don't know whether the number is a million. It takes a hundred failures for one success. Listen, I, I, I I'm not saying I should have a motivational quote book. <laughs> I'm not saying the quotes would be accurate or even motivational, but there's something there. Well, I'll tell you, a hundred fails to get to one success just makes me want to lie down and never try. <laughs> uh, well, listen, on that note, um, what you drinking over there? Um, I have a, I went with the Pepsi Slurpee. It is melting very fast in this heat. So, uh, you know, it's doing its best. Listen, good for you. It's the Slurpee I, I should have had last week. It's not the Slurpee you want. It's the Slurpee you need. I like that. I need to just I stop like trying, trying to make quotes a thing. <laughs> um, I am on my second Sunny D Vodka Seltzer, and I'm so glad you asked because that means... I can open it. There we go. I don't nice. like to open it while we're talking, but if we're if there's an organic moment, there we are. Of yeah, course. I got a water going in my Sunny D vodka seltzers. I, I just can't. They don't. They don't sponsor the show. I just really like the product. Really they like should, the product. though. Like, um, let us know. Reach out. Be like, hey, it's so nice of you to like our product, to talk about our product. Yeah. Here's some product. Yeah. If I may. Yeah. Reach out and touch me with free merchandise. <laughs> yeah, where um, are the where are the Sunny D social media people? Well, maybe that's the next one. Maybe that's the next one. Listen, we gotta we gotta start we gotta start choosing. Yeah. You know, Inst but but look at us, we're always givers. We'd we, we are quicker to be like, let's talk openly about our love of this product with getting nothing in return. Yep. And just hope yep. that someday, four years from now, they might respond. Yeah, maybe. Who knows? That's it. That's yeah. it. Yeah. Well, listen, this episode is, of course, Scandal Elon Musk Part 2. This was, of course, one of our our, our patrons' poll picks. Uh, over on patreon.com slash true crime and cocktails, our members uh, vote for one of the episodes that we cover on this main feed every month of the show. So check that out if you're interested in more information about that. But in the meantime... Obviously, last week uh, was a just a harrowing beginning to what is, I'm sure, going to be an infuriating tale. Yeah. But uh, let me give you a little background right now. Previously on True Crime and Cocktails. Nice. Nice. Chrissy mentioned that Elon Musk was a businessman, an entrepreneur best known for his involvement in SpaceX and Tesla and for being a total boob on Twitter. In the first episode, we focused on his personal life. But today, we're going to look at the very businesses that have made Elon worth $221 billion. So how did Elon grow his fortune? Have his companies ever done anything shady? And is his, non his nonprofit just Elon's own personal tax shelter? Christy Oxborough investigates. Now, not unlike last episode, there is so much about this man and all of the companies I'm about to mention that we're going more highlights yeah. than deep dives because I I can't do more than two episodes no. of this man. No, God, no. Um, two is tough. Yeah. And we haven't, we've only just begun talking about him and I'm already like, ah, get me out. Anyhow, so disclaimer as we start, this episode will contain a brief mention of animal death. So trigger warning for those who need it. I won't belabor it. I won't get into graphic detail. We'll just hit it and run. So as Lauren mentioned, we are focusing on Elon's professional life. Uh, so to try and keep everything clear, we're going to just take it one business venture at a time. They all kind of overlap, but this just is the easiest way uh, to kind of do it. So when Elon dropped out of Stanford in 1995, um, he, along with his brother Kimball and a man named Greg Curry, started a company called Zip2. It was an online business directory, so basically like an online Yellow Pages, because, and I can't believe we were ever this old, Google didn't exist 
at the time. Right. Yeah. Uh, there were claims that Errol Musk, uh, their father, invested $28,000 early on, but Elon denied this, saying, quote, he claims he gave us a whole bunch of money to start our first company. That is not true. My brother and I paid for college through scholarships, loans, and working two jobs simultaneously. The funding we raised for our first company came from a small group of random angel investors in Silicon Valley. According to people who worked at the company, Elon and Kimball would often have disagreements that would turn into full-on physical altercations. I'm talking rolling on the ground type of fights between two grown men. Wow. During one particularly nasty fight, Kimball bit Elon's hand, allegedly taking a chunk of flesh out of it. Oh my god. Kimball said he only did it because he thought Elon was going to punch him. But yeah, you're right. Women are the ones who are too emotional to lead. <laughs> Elon was ousted as CEO in 1996 uh, when the board of directors decided they wanted someone with more experience. In 1999, Zip2 was sold to Compaq Computer for over $300 million. Kimball personally made about $15 million off that deal. Elon made $22 million. Elon used that money then to create an online bank called X.com. Technically, he was one of four founders. Uh, in 2000, it merged with a competing company called Confinity. And the following year, that newly merged company changed its name to PayPal. In 2002, PayPal was acquired by eBay for $1.5 billion. That same year, Elon founded Space Exploration Technologies Corporation, or SpaceX for short. His goal was to make commercial space travel possible and to eventually, eventually colonize Mars. By 2008, NASA had given SpaceX a contract to transport cargo to the International Space Station, or ISS for short. In May 2012, SpaceX launched the Falcon rocket with an unmanned capsule containing 1,000 pounds of supplies for the ISS. It was a historical move. Everyone was excited about it. And look, space and science are cool. But God, do I find rockets and traje trajectories and satellites and all of that shit so boring. Um, so we're skipping over a lot of SpaceX stuff <laughs> simply because it doesn't involve Elon um, as a person. And he's who I'm uh, really wanting to focus on. Of so, course. In 2011, Elon said, best case scenario, SpaceX could put a person on Mars within a decade. At worst maybe 15 to 20 years. Well, recently Elon tweeted he's hoping 2029 is when they're going to have a person on Mars. Uh, will it happen by then? I don't know. Uh, I just know that Elon has a history of overpromising. But if we're lucky and there is a person on Mars in 2029, maybe it'll be him. So in July 2018, a young soccer team became trapped in a flooded cave in Thailand. Elon had SpaceX engineers build a submersible, which was then sent to Thailand to aid in the rescue. However, by the time it got there, eight out of the 10 children had already been rescued, so the sub was never used. An experienced cave diver named Vernon Unsworth said that there was no way the sub rescue would have worked, saying, quote, Musk has no concept of what the cave passage was like. Vernon said the sub was just a PR stunt. Elon responded by paying a private investigator $50,000 to try and find dirt on Vernon. And when that didn't work, Elon posted a series of tweets referring to Vernon as a pedo guy. Oh my God. Elon claimed that pedo guy was just a common insult in South Africa. Then he deleted the tweets and publicly apologized. Before sending an email to Buzz ne BuzzFeed News claiming Vernon was a child rapist and that he married a 12-year-old girl. Oh, my Since God. 
neither of those claims are true. Vernon filed a defamation suit against Elon, but a jury found Elon not liable, which is interesting. Yeah, that's pretty big defamation. <laughs> yeah, it's a pretty big uh, thing to say. And I love that uh, the it came up. Uh, I'm not going to try and uh, take us out of this, but I know you've been watching a lot of Olympics. Thank you. Did you hear? I think I love that I already can't remember who he's from, but the the beach volleyball guy and how they dared to allow him at the Olympics. I just heard about this mm. and I'm bastardizing details, but. I think people have heard probably as much as I have in this. But yes, I believe it's a Netherlands beach volleyball player. Yeah. He was convicted he was. of assaulting, sexually assaulting a 12-year-old girl. Yep. He did a year in prison. Yep. And he's competing in the games. Now, I haven't fact-checked this, but I saw something. Someone had said that he was uh, allowed to use, like, separate entrances and exits and, like, had to be kind of do his own thing to protect everyone from him and whatever and i'm like what are we doing yeah like you literally only have one guy that can come well also like why there's is no reason even... yeah him to mean, be there i i see because this is where it, this is what it turns into for me i'm not saying that it's like if someone has done jail time they shouldn't be allowed to compete in the olympics i'm not saying that at all uh, I think there's plenty of of jail time crimes people can do that then have at it. You 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 commit a fraud, a drug charge. There's lots of things where I would sure. be like, I don't give a shit. Are you good at sport? Great. Yeah. Um, everybody you know deserves a second chance. Whatever. I don't know that raping a child is one of them. I think that that's one yeah. where we say, good good day, sir. It's over for you. Like rape, rape and murder. I think it's pretty murder, like let's yeah. not. He was supposed Violent to crimes. do four years and got yeah. out after one. Right. And then tried to say like, well, I was 19. I didn't really, you know, like know myself yet or right from wrong. It's like 19 and 12. Fuck you. Oh, I'm livid about yeah, it. Yeah. 12 is a is a full child. Um, And he knew. He knew and he admits he knew how old she was. Because it also happened three times after he knew. Okay. And he well, was convicted of each time. Like, yeah, this is, no, it's very damning. I think, uh, yeah, I think for me, I think violent crimes, I think that, yeah, maybe you you don't qualify anymore. Yeah. Why does he qualify for their team? This is the other thing. Yeah. Oh, like, he should like, be, a, they should be it, ashamed of him and be like, he's be not a, support. He's not part of our country. And I'm not defending the Olympics choice to have him. I'm not defending that. Sure. What I'm saying is, is how did it even get to that point? Oh. Why is, why are the Netherlands like, yeah, this is the guy we want representing our country. Like, that's just such a, it's so dark. And he's also married with a kid now. I can't. And to keep in mind, this only happened like tw between 2016 and 2019. So it's not like this happened 30 years ago and we're like, okay, and letting it go. This is recent enough. Again, I learned about it. I just can't believe he's there. I can't believe they sent him. I heard well, he got booed and I was elated. Good. Um, yeah. I, the other thing I'll just add very quickly is there's no minimum or there's no like um, age requirement. There's there's those gymnasts especially the gals oh, sure they're young i mean there, there's some that are 13 14 some i think there may be even some younger this year and to me it's like and, and that's great if you're good enough and you're a kid good sure. god do your thing how i mean i've i've been crying the entire week i, I cry <laughs> when someone wins i cry when someone loses i cry sure. <laughs> i cry for everybody i'm just like it's so beautiful and and the Canadian um, swimmer gals are doing oh, so well. Yeah. I was very moved by that. Um, yeah, I just think that ultimately it's like anything that is getting in the way of the protection and enjoyment of of especially the young athletes who have worked their young lives to be there. Get out. Get out of here. 
Like, oh, what a yeah. mess. I just, this is one of those ones where you go, is it 1992? Are we in 1996? Because that would be a period of time where this wouldn't surprise anybody, by the way. For those young listeners, by the way, this kind of stuff flew back then. No problem. Yeah. Um, but we've, we, we think we've gotten past that, but it's just another, you know, it's another piece of proof, as I say quite often that, that we've had so much progress, not enough, not yeah. enough. Yeah. It's just you know, make sure everyone is safe at you the Olympic have to village. Make sure everyone's safe you know? and, and not by ensuring that this person is being monitored. Like, what are we talking about here? He was convicted of raping a child. Period. He doesn't like, deserve to be there. No, and and I don't understand why a country. I guess I am coming for the Netherlands at this point. Why <laughs> is it that you want this guy representing you? Oh, it's I I if I would be it would make me as upset as I am about the whole Canada soccer debacle. I would be like Here's I would a be in up to that. About that. Here's a follow up to that. By the way, we've gone yeah. off the rails, and I couldn't be happier. <laughs> I. What, did I tell you that that coach is not Canadian? Uh. I was feeling livid and ashamed because I was like, that's not the Canada that I'm from. And then my boyfriend was like, where's the coach from? Is she Canadian? And I was like, what do you Google? She's English, British. She's from England. No offense to the Brits. I'm not of saying that. Any, not. I, we love, we're all part of the Commonwealth. We love yous. It's not that. It was more that I was like, okay. It makes me feel better that she wasn't sure. born and raised in Canada. That's all. It, it's it's harsh. It's harsh to. I'm upset about the whole thing. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm just really upset that that guy's there. And I well, the other thing, listen, the other thing about the soccer thing, very quickly. So of yeah. course, she had flown drones over the opposing team's practices, which is yeah. appalling. But then in my research, because we never stop researching, folks, whether it's for the show or just for our own brains, uh, this woman, the coach, is married and has a child with uh, a woman who is an ex-soccer player. Now, the, the, the team that she was watching with the drone, New Zealand. Her wife is an alum of the New Zealand team. Oh. And I was like, that, that's, I mean, look, maybe I'm making, I'm, I'm, I'm. I'm murder boarding with thread too quickly, but I'm just like, sure. my God, I feel like I would be livid if it was like, I played for a team for my country yeah. and then my partner spied on my country's team. I don't know. Maybe, oh. I'm just, maybe I'm just feeling very patriotic these days because of the Olympics, but you know, here we go. Oh, I, that would be a fight. <laughs> that would be a fight at home once yeah. a week. Oh yeah. I, yeah. I'd be upset to learn about the cheating at all but then i'd find it an special like affront to me yeah that i mean i assume she would have continued doing it until until she got caught but against yeah. my own country like that would have oh i yeah we would have had a fight yeah i and I just want to clarify what I said. I'm not suggesting that I assume Great Britain, people from Britain are, are cheaters. That's not what I was meaning. I was just relieved that this woman was from anywhere but Canada. It could have been any oh, country. Sure. This isn't sure. this isn't a comment. I mean, again, it's not that. Of course. It was more just that I was like, if she was born and raised in Canada and did that, that would just make me question my entire life. It it's hard. It's hard when you hear. You know, you always hear like, oh, Canada's so nice. And yeah. then all of a sudden it's like, ah, they cheated. And I'm like, no, they didn't. Oh, yeah. I don't know. The point is we have a lot of Olympic feelings. <laughs> That's the point. What I'm That's excited point. about is in like yeah. two or three years when someone finds the podcast for the first time and they're going to start on Elon Musk because it speaks to them for some reason. And they're going to yeah. be like, what the hell is this current event bullshit? And the answer <laughs> is a gift to you. And the beautiful thing is because by now, a uh, future listener, you've probably long forgotten the 2024 Summer Olympics. Yes. And whatever nonsense happened and whatever beautiful sweater that Tom Daly is going to inevitably crochet for himself, which I cannot wait. I've seen his design that he has sketched out and I'm excited to see him pull it off. Um, you're just going to have forgotten it. This is going to be a fun throwback for you. 
And future listener, if you have been approached by some sort of military leader to go back in time to do a mission, just let us know what your objective was. That's all. <laughs> God, if this is their first taste, they're welcome. Yep. It is what it is. So in 2018, the U.S. government allowed SpaceX to launch satellites into low orbit. The satellite network, uh, which is called Starlink, was meant to make internet service accessible in rural areas. As of this record, there are 6,219 Starlink satellites in orbit. Apparently, the plan is to have as many as 42,000. Because these satellites are low orbit, um, they're visible to the naked eye, so it mucks with any sort of ground-based astronomy. According to a 2023 study published by the journal Astronomy and Astrophysics, the mass of Starlink satellites are negatively affecting radio astronomy and dumping unintended electromagnetic radiation into space. They tried to launch another 20 earlier this month, uh, but there was some sort of problem and all 20 fell to Earth. But don't panic. They burned up during reentry. So it's not like a satellite just kind of fell to the ground. Um, apparently in February 2022, there was a geomagnetic storm that caused the loss of 40 satellites. Did you ever think you'd hear me say geomagnetic on this show? Probably not. Unless you're an OG listener who remembers my very brief time as Christy the Science Nerd. Christy, she's, she's a science, science nerd. nerd. God, were we ever that young? No. No. Before I move on from SpaceX, there have been uh, multiple allegations of Elon being inappropriate with female employees, including having an alleged fling with an intern. In 2013, Elon allegedly asked a female SpaceX employee to have his babies because he was concerned about underpopulation and felt that high IQ people needed to procreate. The woman turned him down, um, and then he just kind of kept asking, even though she said no. Um, Elon absolutely denies the allegation. But I find it interesting that that woman's story is pretty much word for word for what Siobhan Zillis said happened with Elon. And Siobhan Zillis, of course, uh, went on to have three children with Elon. So, I mean, uh, is it possible that two women had the same experience? I'd say so. Um, yeah. The other woman remained at SpaceX, um, but said her working relationship with Elon deteriorated, so she left with an exit package worth more than a million, which sounds sketchy mm -hmm. to me. Um, oh, and during a flight in 2016, Elon allegedly asked a flight attendant for the SpaceX corporate jet to go to his room to perform a full body massage. No. Again, this is on par with Castor Troy, suck my tongue. <laughs> Flight attendants do not need to deal with that bullshit. No. That's not what they're there for. No. But the flight attendant was like, I guess if that's what we do. So she goes to the room, Elon completely naked. No. Allegedly. Apparently nothing on but a sheet over the lower half of his body. During the massage, Elon allegedly rubbed the woman's leg, exposed his genitals to her, and then offered to buy her a horse if she was willing to, quote, do more. <laughs> Are we trading in horses now? Like, it's, it's wild. To, That's wild. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, after the woman declined, she noticed that suddenly her work hours got cut back. 
No. Uh, the company eventually gave the woman a $250,000 settlement. Elon denies the allegations, but suggests if they were true, it should be called Elon Gate. Because not only is this man not a scientist, he's also not a comedian. Yeah. <sighs> In June 2024, eight former employees sued SpaceX, claiming that Elon ordered them to be fired after they accused SpaceX of allowing discrimination and sexual harassment. When complaints were first made to SpaceX, um, a specific human resource executive, they allegedly responded with, quote, I've never been sexually harassed. I must not be hot enough. The HR person said that? Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. Seven of the former employees said that when they complained about the treatment they received, they were purposely excluded from meetings and... Um, Women often saw male colleagues promoted over them, despite men having less experience and education than their female counterpart counterparts. Ugh. One female employee complained that a male colleague took credit for her work, and she told a she talked to like a manager about it, and he told her she was being too emotional and she needed to learn to be more humble. Mm. Okay. Mm. Uh, and one last thing uh, about SpaceX. Elon allegedly gave Jeffrey Epstein a private tour of the facility in 2012. An attorney for SpaceX has since said that never happened. When shit hit the fan with Epstein, Elon tried to distance himself, claiming he barely knew the man. He only met him once at a dinner being held by uh, Reed Hoffman, who was the founder of LinkedIn, uh, Elon said, it only lasted like 30 minutes. It was held during the day. It was nothing. Um, I believe n none of that. Who? What fucking rich mucky muck is going to have a huge dinner with a bunch of rich dudes and it's only going to be 30 minutes long and it's going to be an afternoon thing? First of all, thank you for your use of the term mucky muck. I have not heard of that in some time. Um, <laughs> I'm off the rails today. Well, also, but it also feels like, what is he defending here? Like, what does he think we're accusing him of? Does he think we're accusing him of having sex with Jeffrey Epstein on this tour? Like, what does he think we're, well, it was only he's, in the afternoon. It was only a half yeah. an hour. It's like, well, what are you, what are you he's, trying to hide? I think he's trying so hard to be like, I didn't know the guy. Oh. How, how could I possibly have known him personally? We met for 30 minutes. There were so many other people there. Barely. It was during the day. So I only really talk to people at night. Like I, yeah, I guess you can't yeah. know somebody if you've only met them in the daytime. <laughs> I, I guess not. Oh God. Um, but he said he only agreed to briefly meet Epstein. So now he agrees they've met personally. Okay. Changing his but story. He, yep. Um, he only agreed to it because his then wife Tallulah wanted to meet Epstein for a novel she was writing. Yeah. I didn't know Tallulah wrote anything. Uh, she's an actress. Uh, great on you for having multiple um, things you like to do. Uh, Elon then said that Epstein was, quote, obviously a creep. Mm -hmm. Epstein also allegedly uh, set Elon's brother Kimball up with one of Epstein's ex-girlfriends. They allegedly dated from 2011 to 2012, following Kimball's divorce in 2010. I don't know how close uh, Elon was with Epstein. I mean, he was photographed at the Vanity Fair Oscar party in 2014 with Epstein's right-hand woman, Jelaine Maxwell. Uh, but if you ask Elon, he was photobombed. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Elon went so far as to say he never even said hello to her. And he tried to deflect by saying, quote, the real question is why Vanity Fair invited her in the first place. I mean, great point. But according to a Vanity Fair staffer who attended the event, not only did Elon say hello to Jelaine, they spoke at great length about aliens and the fact that Elon believes that reality could be a simulation. 
The staffer also claims she overheard Jelaine ask Elon if it was possible to delete information about oneself off the internet before outright telling him she wanted the internet destroyed. Uh, for more information on Jelaine Maxwell and Jeffrey Epstein, check out episode 129, House of Maxwell. But we're going to move on to Elon's next business venture. In 2003, engineers Mark Tarpening and Martin Eberhard founded Tesla Motors with the dream of making electric cars that were fast and fun to drive. The following year, Elon Musk came in as an early investor and a board member, and in 2008, he was made CEO. But it kind of seems like that may have been by force. In late 2007, the company released a statement saying that Martin Eberhard was transitioning from executive management and the board of directors to a role on an advisory board. It was then suggested Elon asked Martin to leave. Elon said he didn't, but he just didn't see a role for Martin at Tesla. You know, uh, the man who co-founded the company. There's just no place for him. Yeah. Martin sued Elon, claiming that he had been pushed out of the company and publicly disparaged. Uh, the suit was later settled. No details have been released. Martin, who has since signed an NDA with Tesla, said he was not happy with the transition he made in the company. Elon has since become the face of Tesla to the point where he is often mistaken as the founder. Um, which must be a real tough blow for Martin, since he is one of the founders. In 2008, Tesla launched its first electric car, the Roadster. Numerous models have since been released, including the monstrosity known as the Cybertruck. But ugly trucks aside, Elon's main goal all along has been to create an autopilot system. Basically, he wants the cars to drive themselves, and while I get how convenient that would be for people with long commutes, I personally just don't think I would ever trust it. But Elon's focus all along has been to get that autopilot feature working. I mean, Lord knows he hasn't taken a second to consider visually appealing truck designs. Um, but to Elon... He said if he can't make an autopilot if he can't make autopilot a reality, well, then the Tesla company is basically worth nothing. Uh, and this may come as a shock to no one, but Elon's been known to overreact. Again, though, women are the emotional ones. Of course. In 2016, Tesla released a video preview of a fully self-driving vehicle. However, it's since come out that that footage was fake. Employees then admitted that Elon has exaggerated the function of the autopilot feature, saying he always says they're closer to having it work than they actually are. Between 2019 and 2023, there have been 736 accidents involving the autopilot feature, those accidents re resulted in the deaths of 44 people, uh, like in March 2023 when a vehicle and autopilot didn't slow down when a 17-year-old kid was crossing the street. Uh, the teen was hit at 45 miles per hour, and the vehicle kept going as though nothing happened. According to Forbes, out of 30 brands of car, Tesla has the highest accident rate. Between 2014 and 2015, there were three incidents alone where a Tesla just randomly drove off a cliff. Oh my God. In November 2022, 300,000 Teslas were recalled due to a software glitch. Days later, some investors sued Tesla, saying Elon had, quote, significantly overstated uh, the viability and safety of the company's autopilot and self-driving technologies. Have there been random safety issues with various Tesla vehicles outside of the autopilot feature? Yes. In 2014, engineer Christina Ballen raised safety concerns over a design flaw that could affect the vehicle's brake system. When she spoke to management about it, 
they fired her and then publicly accused her of using Tesla resources for some kind of secret project. Thankfully, Christina won a wrongful dismissal case, but Elon has just never acknowledged that design flaw. Whistleblowers? Note. Hell yeah. Christina wasn't the only brave soul who was fired for doing the right thing and worrying about public safety. In 2020, Tesla fired Stephen Hen Henkes, uh, a field quality manager for Tesla subsidiary Solar City. Stephen was fired after he tried to inform the public about defects that could cause fires in the company's solar panels. Stephen filed a wrongful termination suit. That appears to still be ongoing. But back to regular Tesla. Between December 2023 and February 2024, the company recalled more than 4 million vehicles for various issues. In January 2024, they recalled nearly 200,000 vehicles due to a software issue that involved the rear view camera. February 2024, there were issues with the warning labels in the vehicle being too small to be read. Uh, the latest recall involved 2.19 million vehicles uh, and was Tesla's largest recall to date. To be clear, I'm not saying um, that every Tesla vehicle is bad. I'm just suggesting maybe Elon is pushing engineers too fast and sloppy mistakes are getting made, allegedly. Uh, and there's more going on at Tesla than software glitches. In the spring of 2022, 15 Tesla workers filed a lawsuit against the company claiming racial discrimination and harassment. It was said that African-American workers were greeted by white bosses with statements like, quote, welcome to the plantation. Oh, boy. Yeah. Uh, one employee said that he was called the N-word. No. By colleagues. No. And that they had drawn swastikas and left drawings of derogatory caricatures of black children around the factory. Other non-black non employees said, they did hear racial slurs at work, but they were used in a friendly manner. Wowzer. It's not the manner with which it was being used. No, the, the, yeah. I'm going to say it. There's no tone. Yeah. No tone. Correct. Huh. Um, a human resource executive said the allegations weren't a big deal because the man accusing them was just a contractor and not a full-time staff member. The exec executive said that the company was not perfect, but said they'd come a long way. Um, just, a, just a heads up to them, they've got a long way to go. Uh, the company was ordered to pay $136 million in damages. Yep. Uh, and speaking of how certain employees were treated, a female employee said that sexual harassment was rampant. Uh, saying the factory was, quote, more resembles a crude, archaic construction site or frat house than a cutting-edge company. Seven female former employees filed sexual, sexual harassment lawsuits against Tesla in the span of just 10 months. Some of the women claimed they heard male employees say gross things about women every single day. Uh, including debating about which female employees were, quote, fuckable uh, and loudly talking about their sexual preferences, like the absolute prince of a man who said, quote, I like to spit on a girl's face when I'm fucking her. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Allegedly, uh, a supervisor walked up behind one of the women and whispered in her ear, quote, I hear you don't like to scream loud enough. Oh, my God, that's so dark. Yeah. Um, the supervisor later transferred that woman to another part of the factory and told her new supervisor that the woman wasn't a valuable team member. Oh. So he suggested uh, she gets stuck in a position that's outside the factory and less desirable to do. Hmm. And while Good these aren't God. examples of things that Elon has personally done, uh, it has been said he has a short fuse and allegedly loses his temper on employees. 
Uh, for example, Elon allegedly told an engineer, quote, I'm going to sell a fuckload of cars. So whatever suspension you need so I can sell a fuckload of cars, that's the suspension I want. And speaking of Elon and his treatment of employees, in 2018, he tweeted that Tesla factory workers could lose their stock options if they tried to form a union. He said, quote, camaraderie is dangerous. Oh, wow. I'm going to say it. It's a bad sign when a boss dislikes a union. Yep. Also in 2018, Elon tweeted, quote, am considering taking Tesla private at 420. Funding secured. And look, I get that I'm not cool, uh, but I, I get the 420 pot joke he was trying to make there. Um, but what the fuck was he doing? The SEC ended up getting involved, claiming he was trying to manipulate stock prices. He then doubled down and said he was going to go private because that was the best pop path possible for his company. Uh, the stock prices jumped. And then fell almost 40%. But the SEC uh, was investigating him for fraud. Uh, his investors got nervous. Elon publicly stated he would not be taking um, Tesla private. Uh, in the end, as part of the agreement with the SEC, Elon had to pay a $20 million fine and step down as chairman of the board of Tesla for three years. Wow. And let's not forget that during the pandemic, Elon defied a local stay-at-home order and forced his workers in the Tesla factory back to work early. He even told the workers, allegedly, that they wouldn't get paid and that their unemployment benefits would be jeopardized if they didn't report back to work. Again, this is one of those moments when a union would really come in handy and Elon knows it. Yep. But he was so convinced that COVID wasn't real that in March 2020, he tweeted he expected, quote, close to zero new cases in the U.S. by the end of April. He was a, just a little off. Um, the actual number of cases in the U.S. at the end of April was 1,003,974. So I'm not great at math, but I'd say that's a little more than close to zero. Yeah. Um, to be clear, um, him forcing them back to work resulted in 450 employees getting COVID. Of course it did. In September 2020, Elon said that neither he nor any of his children would get the COVID vaccine because they weren't at risk. Two months later, Elon got COVID. <laughs> uh, he claims, though, that was just a faulty test. Oh, okay. Mm. There was also a whole thing about Elon saying he'd donate ventilators to hospitals, and then he sent smaller devices which weren't actually full-on ventilators, but he claims the hospitals knew and that they confirmed the devices were needed anyway. Uh, I'm going to be honest. I'm not getting further into it. It's exhausting. It's fine. So in 2021, Elon changed his title at Tesla to techno king which is just oh. a a sad man's way of saying i'm not a regular ceo i'm a cool ceo uh he just wants so desperately to be liked and considered cool every single video of that man at an event involves him hopping around and posing like a fucking Fortnite avatar he's a grown-ass man but never acts like it. He is still that lonely little boy desperately trying to get attention and be seen as cool, even though he is failing miserably. It is painful to watch. Uh, but also in 2021, Elon made the decision to move Tesla headquarters to Texas. Why? Because Elon and the Tesla board agreed that Tesla would give Elon $56 billion dollars for nothing just because he's you know top dog at tesla he should get 56 billion but wait what does that have to do with moving to texas well it's coming 
I'm so sorry. No problem. Uh, I was like, wait so, a second. Am I missing yeah. something in my own yeah. brain? Okay. So Tesla and Elon are like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Elon should get 56 billion. Tesla investors were like, e, that's a bit excessive because it is. Yeah. Uh, they also questioned the objectivity of one of the board members who was Elon's brother, Kim. Uh, so the investors take Elon to court where a judge ruled that Elon's compensation was inappropriately set. Elon argued, well, the money's going to get used to finance space travel. But the judge still sided with the investors. But because he was angry about it, Elon made a big showing about how unfair it is. Yeah, super sad that one of the richest men in the world doesn't get an extra $56 billion just for funsies. So he moved Tesla to Texas and then made Texas his primary residence. Oh, and did you know Texas also doesn't have uh, income tax? Oh. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if that's specifically his reason. It kind of feels like it. Um, but the same year, Elon uh, publicly spoke out about, um, against a proposed billionaire's tax. Mm -hmm. But it's no surprise uh, that Elon would be against, against any sort of attacks. Uh, this is the man who publicly stated he doesn't believe companies should receive government subsidies. Um, but his companies, specifically Tesla, SolarCity, and SpaceX, have received billions from the government. According to the LA Times, by 2015, Elon's companies have received an estimated $4.9 billion in government support. Tesla even took some of the money that was offered to corporations during the pandemic, although they won't admit how much they received. On another note, Elon has given away less than 1% of his net worth. Anyhow, that's Elon's wild. Uh, next big venture. In 2016, Elon co-founded a neurotechnology startup called Neuralink with the initial plan to merge artificial intelligence with the human brain. Neuralink's ultimate goal is to help with hearing and vision and to cure spinal cord injuries and brain diseases like dementia, Alzheimer's, and Parkinson's. However, in 2022, Neuralink came under federal investigation for violent violations to the Animal Welfare Act. It was said between 2018 and 2022, Neuralink killed 1,500 animals, including sheep, pigs, and monkeys. To be clear, 1,500 is a rough estimate because the company said it does not keep count of the animals that get tested. Well, then what are you doing? Yeah. The only... That's... Oh, boy. Well, listen. This is where I come <laughs> into the chat because I know <laughs> a few things about this, and that's absurd. Yeah. Yeah. They said they don't keep an exact count. Well, then your then your data is skewed. Then yeah. then that is proof right there that what you're doing isn't even the science is is doesn't hold water. You have to keep track. Yep. Oh, yeah. <sighs> uh, current and former employees have admitted that the number is higher than necessary, blaming Elon's constant demand that they speed up their research. There were allegedly four experiments uh, which were ruined due to human error causing the tests to be repeated and more animals to be needlessly killed. Uh, those four experiments alone involved two monkeys and 86 pigs. Uh, some of the people involved blamed the errors on a lack of preparation, uh, which they say came from working in a high-pressure environment. In 2023, the investigation found no evidence of animal welfare breaches, which is interesting, uh, but three months later, Wired reported that Neuralink had hidden the truth about the death and suffering that animals had endured at the company. In 2023, the Department of Transportation opened an investigation into Neuralink's improper handling of hazardous pathogens. That same year, the FDA gave Neuralink approval to begin human trials. And just days ago, uh, because this man can't stop Making news, Elon predicted that brain chips will eventually replace phones. 
He said, quote, the future is going to be weird. And I'll say it. The moment we trade cell phones for brain chips, I'm off grid. Yeah, same. I'm off grid. Same. I will not no. accept that. I accept. I understand if you're going to put it in somebody's brain because it's going to help them in some way as a phone. We can hold a phone. Like, stop it. I just can't. I'm very passionate about brain cell phones. Yeah. Ah, uh, so to what I think we would all call Elon's biggest Achilles heel, Twitter. In October 2022, Elon spent $44 billion to purchase the social media site Twitter. I'm sure he only uh, did it because he thought it'd make him cool, uh, but apparently his ex-wife, actress Tallulah Riley, texted him in March that year and said, quote, can you buy Twitter and then delete it, please. She also said, quote, America is going insane. Or can you buy Twitter and make it radically free speech? So much stupidity comes from Twitter. Elon allegedly responded, quote, maybe buy it and change it to properly support free speech. Now, Tallulah was apparently concerned about the wokeism on Twitter, um, she was greatly upset when Twitter suspended an account um, of the Babylon Bee, which is a right-leaning satirical site. Uh, they got suspended after they referred to a transgender female pediatrician as man of the year. Tallulah apparently thought the suspension was unwarranted, um, which gives us a real peek into her as a person, um, but I don't have the time or energy to get into her today. Yeah. So soon after acquiring Twitter, Elon claimed to have eradicated at least 90% of scams on Twitter. But that number feels made up because there's no way to know how many fake accounts are on that site. But what specific scams is he even referring to? Spam bots or phishing links? We don't know. He never clarifies because he's hoping we'll just be so wowed by 90% that we're just going to praise him without asking for follow-up details. Advertisers were so unhappy with Elon that 59% pulled out that first year. And since advertising is 90% of Twitter's revenue, that's a big problem. Elon's great solution? Remove the blue verified checkmark which allows people of note to combat fake accounts and let literally anyone have a blue check mark if they pay $8 a month. Two months later, he posted a poll asking if he should step down as CEO of Twitter. 57.5% said yes. Elon said, quote, I will resign as CEO as soon as I find someone foolish enough to take the job. In April 2023, he said, quote, I did stand down. I keep telling you I'm not the CEO of Twitter. My dog is the CEO of Twitter. What? Just shut up, man. Stop. You know what I mean? Like, yes. What an oaf. Thank you for oaf. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I'm going to miss say her name, but Linda Yakarinko? Yakarino? There we go. Uh was named the new CEO of Twitter. Uh, Elon gave himself the uh, title of Chief Technology Officer. Oh, he's not Techno King this time? What a Apparently shame. Apparently not. Uh, when he first bought Twitter, Elon said, quote, I believe free, sweet, free speech is a societal imperative for a functioning democracy. A month later, he reinstated Trump's account. Trump had been permanently banned in January 2021 following the attack on the Capitol and the risk that he could incite further violence. Elon also reinstated Kanye West, who was banned after praising Hitler, making anti-Semitic jokes, and tweeting a picture of a swastika. <sighs> but this was all in the name of free speech, right? Then explain to me why in December 2022, Elon banned several prominent journalists from Twitter because they tweeted about Elon Jet, uh, which only posts already public information. Uh, but what else has Elon done on Twitter uh, in the name of free speech? 
Well, for the sake of time, uh, we're going to look at it in point form. In November 2023, he agreed uh, with a post that falsely claimed Jewish people were escalating hatred against white people. Uh, to be fair, he did later admit that agreeing to such a post was foolish, saying, quote, of the 30,000, it might be literally the worst and dumbest post I've ever done. Uh, later that same month, Elon was accused of promoting the bullshit Pizzagate theory. Oh. Elon promoted controversial accounts that had posted numerous anti-Semitic comments in the span of a few months. Uh, he later uh, deleted any reference to those accounts. Uh, Elon vowed to remove all child exploitation content from Twitter. Uh, but then he dissolved the company's trust and safety council and gutted the moderation teams. And worse, he personally reinstated the account of a far-right QAnon influencer who shared graphic material involving child sexual abuse. When the influencer's account was unsuspended, Elon claimed only Twitter staff had seen the graphic material that that person had posted. Um, however, before it was removed, the post was viewed 3.1 million times in Ugh. four days. Elon shared articles making up lies about Paul Pelosi following his home invasion. Uh, he claimed the COVID vaccine was unsafe. He made, not so surprisingly, um, he said uh, it was discovered that Elon's takeover of Twitter coincided with the increase in hate speech. The Center for Countering Digital Hate found that a racial slur was used more than 26,000 times after Elon took over. This is more than three times the average from the year before. Um, slurs against trans people increased 53%, and uses of derogatory terms for gay men was used 39% more than usual. Oh, and in July 2023, Elon changed the name of Twitter to X, uh, but, but I don't call it that. Nobody partially, does. Partially because he hates that. Anyhow. Yes. So one final thing that I wanted to mention involving Elon and Twitter. In November 2021, an official from the UN said that 6 billion, or just 2%, of Elon's wealth could solve world hunger. Elon responded saying if they could provide him with a plan to solve world hunger for 6 billion, he'd sell Tesla stock immediately. And do it. Two weeks later, the UN's World Food Program responded with a very detailed plan of how that money would be spent, in which regions it would get spent. Elon never replied. Oh my God, of course. A month later, Elon donated $5.7 billion worth of Tesla stock to a nonprofit. And yes, he backed out of giving money to help with world hunger, but at least he gave that almost exact amount to a charity, right? <laughs> well, uh, the specific nonprofit that received that massive donation was the Musk Foundation. Stop it. A nonprofit that Elon founded in 2001 with the purpose to provide solar power energy systems in disaster areas to support research development and advocacy and to support science and engineering educational efforts. So yeah, after he said he'd donate $6 billion to do something good for the world, the asshole turned around and donated nearly that same amount to his own foundation, which conveniently uh, shaves a few billion off his own personal tax bill. Between 2002 and 2018, the foundation gave $25 million to nonprofits, um, but nearly half of that went to OpenAI, uh, which is an independent research organization co-founded by Elon. Um, as of now, he does not seem to be affiliated with it at the time that they got the money he was. In 2021 and 2022, more than half of the foundation's donations went to something that involved either Elon, his businesses, or his family. And yes, the foundation did build a math and science-focused school, um, but by built, it was in Elon's home in Bel Air. And it only had 14 students, five of which were Elon's own children. Oh, well. Yeah. 
I, I know. can't. I know. In 2022, the Musk Foundation gave away $234 million less than the minimum required by law to maintain tax-deductible status. So is Elon using this foundation to save himself money, or are the people running the foundation just unsure of how to do so? Well, normally, with a foundation of this magnitude, there are so many people involved, investment officers, managing directors, grant managers. But at the Musk Foundation, Elon is the only employee. Stop it. Uh, so sorry, there are two people who volunteer as board members. No. And if that isn't shady enough, the foundation's website doesn't list any contact information or allow anyone to apply for a grant. It's literally just a white page that lists the foundation um, saying they support renewable energy, um, pediatric research, human space exploration, stuff like that. Um, it looks like a random Word doc. Uh, if I had it up at one point with other Word docs, I couldn't even on a quick glance tell which was a website and which was my own Word doc. That's how bad it was. Granted, who knows? At any point since we've recorded this, it could change. Lord knows. I doubt it, though. Um, I did take a screenshot just in case. But anyhow, um, but if if this feels sketchy um, to anyone else, because this is a billion dollar foundation, I mean, <laughs> I'm just... I'm just disappointed in the lack of information on their website, but it's the exact opposite of how much information is available on Elon Musk just on the internet. There's so much about him, but so, so little about this foundation that's supposed to do good, but doesn't seem to. Mm -hmm. um, while I was researching for this episode, something came up daily about him. It was hard to keep up. There's going to be more things that come out after we record this. Uh, we just have to accept it. Um, for example, last week, Elon announced he's going to move the headquarters for both SpaceX and Twitter to Texas, just like he did with Tesla. But what was his reason this time? Because California recently passed a law that prevents schools from making rules requiring staff to tell parents about a child's gender identity. Elon said this law was the last straw. For a man with a trans child, it's both shocking and incredibly disappointing how much he seems to dislike trans people. Um, but for more on that, you know, uh, check out the last episode. Um, I'm just very happy that his daughter, Vivian, seems to have a supportive mother. Yes. If nothing else. Um, and then again, because almost daily, on July 28th, apparently the day after I watched Date Night, uh, Grimes, <laughs> bringing that back, Grimes' mother, Sandy, tweeted a plea to Elon asking him to allow the children to travel to see their ailing 93-year-old great-grandmother, who is sadly at end-of-life palliative care. Um, as you may recall from the first uh, episode in this series, Elon and Grimes had three children together, a son called X in 2020, a daughter, Exa Dark in 2021 and son techno in 2022 elon and grimes have been deep in a custody battle since 2022 uh but the court records are sealed and uh, we just can't know the current status of it um according to grimes mother her mother wants to see the children especially the youngest whom the grandmother great grandmother uh has never met Apparently, they had plans for the children to travel to meet her at the end of July, but Elon canceled the trip. Sandy's mother claims Elon had been keeping the children as well as their passports um, so that Grimes wouldn't have access. It's incredibly gross. Uh, Sandy also pointed out that Elon and his son X were seen at the Olympics in Paris, but there was no sign of the other two children. Um, for the love, man, just let Grimes see her own children. And if you don't yeah. like Grimes fine, but don't punish your own children by depriving them of time with their mother who genuinely wants to be involved in their lives. You are only hurting your own children, you selfish prick. But then again, your treatment of Vivian proves that you don't actually care about your own children's well-being, which, as a mother, makes me physically ill. In conclusion, 
Some describe Elon Musk as innovative and ambitious with a brilliant mind for technology. I personally see him as an entitled man-child who makes people feel small because even decades later, he's still desperately trying to distance himself from the lonely little boy who was mercilessly bullied. And while I have compassion for what he may have gone through as a child, I will never feel sympathy for the pathetic excuse of a man that he's become. Was that too harsh? Oh, by our standards, it probably wasn't harsh enough. She's on a tear. She's Christy Oxborough. How beautiful. Yeah. Uh, wowzer. Listen, yeah. let's take a quick break, hit the can, grab a drink, and we're going to be back with our final thoughts about Elon Musk. It's like vomit coming up <laughs> on this episode of True Crime and Cocktails. Clap two on three. One, two, three. Welcome back to this episode of True Crime and Cocktails. We're, of course, discussing Elon Musk. This is part two of our two part series. So much to talk about. I'm going to dive right in. Um, when he sold PayPal, it sold for a billion dollars. Now, I'm not suggesting that he got a billion dollars because I know there was right. other people involved, but he would have ended up with a lot of money. And this is where I asked the first question that I'll ask so many times over the next few minutes as we're discussing. And I know that some people would say, but Lauren, where are you coming from? But hear me out. Why not quit? then mm -hmm. why not quit then if you made and look okay so say he wanted to keep going after that fine whatever the fact that he's allowed his worth to get into the 221 billion dollar range yeah this is something that i don't think i'll ever be able to wrap my head around and i'm someone who loves what i do for a living but sure. if i had i'm gonna say it one billion dollars I would spend my days donating money to places and living on a fucking beach. Like I, I, yep. I don't understand this kind of drive. And I understand that it's a different type of brain because, you know, I guess I'm just like, what does he get out of this? Because it really feels when you hear him say quotes, like I'm going to sell a shit ton of cars. It feels like he's, in it for the money. Oh, yeah. And so then if that's the case, my question is, how much money will be enough money? You have enough money for yourself, for your children, for your children's children to live yep. on and on without ever having to worry. If you donated more than half, you would still have enough money for, for multiple generations of your fam family lineage to live for free forever oh, i yeah. can't wrap my head around it and and it's it's i understand that people have passions but i i guess what i don't understand is that what i do for a living is like it, it, it's a it's an art it's it's creative right so it's like a lot of people do it for the love of it they, they may not sure. make money from it um as would i i guess i just don't have a, i have a hard time thinking of of business people in the same way like it's like do sure. you feel like it's an art do you go into work mm -hmm. and sexually harass a woman and go i'm living my dream like i just because you can do that out of the workplace too you know like i i yeah. just i think that what it is i'm looking for motive i'm like what is your real motive here because it's mm -hmm. not feeling like it's like when you're saying that he's donated less than one percent of his worth to charity or not even charity just donated it uh, we to God knows where his own charity. Um, mm. It just really feels to me like it's like we're dealing with such a level of greed. And I know I'm not saying anything that's revolutionary. I know this isn't really a hot take. But what I wanted to offer is when you add in him having 12 children and saying to people, we need to repopulate the earth with smart children and smart people. Mm -hmm. It just takes such a tone. You know, it's it's not like it's like he he fell into this money. He's made these successful businesses. He is a legit philanthropist. He's living his life. No, it feels like this man is literally trying to hoard as much money as he possibly can and also have as many children as he possibly can. It starts to feel like we're dealing with someone that wants to be a king. Mm -hmm. Oh, Techno I know king suddenly feels a little bit less funny and a little uh... more chilling, you know? Oh, 100%. I truly, truly believe that to that man, 
the more money you have, the more important you are. And he just yes. wants to be so important because he also thinks that's so impressive. And he thinks that reflects positively on him. And it's like, it does not. No, if anything, it's, uh, it's the opposite. Yeah. It's not a good look. Oh, a hundred percent. Look, if I had a billion dollars, no one's seeing me again. Nope. Because I'm in a shack somewhere living my best life, reading all day till I'm physically ill. Yep. Like, I just... Over 200 billion is just ridiculous. And I know he's not alone. I know there's so he's many not. of them that are that level, but it's like, I just... Oh, God, it's so gross. It's so gross. Again, it just feels like it's so much about, like, power and thinking he's better than everybody. It feels like he wants mm -hmm. to create his own race. There, I said it. His own race oh, of children. Of course he does. Smart. He wants to, you know, he wants to create his own race of, quote, smart people to live off of his money, right? And and yeah. do what he was doing. It's very creepy to me. Um the revelation about these Starlink satellites, that they're visible and they're messing up astronomy, that burns me mm. in a way that I can't even describe. The fact that so many of them were falling back down, burning up in the atmosphere, getting lost. I'm mm. going to say it almost feels like someone didn't know what he was doing when he agreed to the whole thing. And because we know he has this uh, pattern, and I've I've seen a documentary talk about this, about Tesla specifically as well, which you, you talked about, um, he pushes people faster than the, the technology can be created. And so stuff yep. ends up getting put out that's like not really good enough or not where it needs to be. People end up getting hurt because of that quite often in the Tesla case. And this feels yep. like another one of those situations. Um, the fact that there's like increased pollution you were talking about and whatnot, like that the, the scientists are basically like, you're fucking everything for a lot of us. And he's going, shoot some more up there. It's just, yeah. The fact that there's like, what did I say? 6,000, 2,000? Big difference 6, there. Uh, there's like 6,000 up there and their goal is 42,000. And if 6,000 are cr mucking things up and and creating all this pollution, et cetera, et cetera, yeah, let's times it by what? Seven, eight times that much? Seems like a yeah. great plan. And again, he, he has this way of making it seem like it's like, well, I want to provide the internet to rural areas that have a hard time getting it. No, you don't. No, you don't. You're you're messing around. You're you're being you're playing spaceman today. Like it's it's I don't believe that he has any altruistic intentions with what no. he's doing, because every time you talk about him going like, well, he wants to do this altruistic, you know, pursuit. He never does it. So right. it's like you have no track record of ever doing anything other than pushing your engineers to work faster than they can, which ultimately ends up hurting people. And yeah. making billions of dollars doing it. I mean, it's, I think what's fascinating about his story specifically to me is that his business practices are so bad and he keeps being rewarded. Oh, yeah. Why would he ever stop? He's a well, megalomaniac won't. who will never stop because he no. keeps, he keeps getting away with everything and getting, not only getting away with it, but being rewarded for it. He's getting, again, this, this payout they wanted to give him, $56 billion, and then the courts had to be like, that feels like too much. Like, that's crazy. Yeah. Because what's it for? Nothing. Nothing. It's just the mutually agreed upon, we all think that I should have that money. And it's like, no, because you didn't legally find a way to take that money out of the company yourself. Right. So you were like, this is the avenue I'm going to go. Right. And the investors were like, hell no. And good for them. Good for them. Yeah. Don't let him walk all over you. No. Um, the, the flight attendant, he asked for the full body massage. Uh, and then she was like, no, I don't want to get a horse. I'm not going to go any further. Uh, I love that he said it should be called Elon Gate, like elongate. Yep. Like that he thought that that was the funniest joke ever. You're talking about treating a woman who is a flight attendant like a prostitute. Correct. She's not a sex worker. That is Correct. not her job. And by the way, there's plenty of sex workers 
who have agency and are choosing that profession that you could hire to come and do exactly what you wanted. And that's always one of the things that grinds me when you hear about these men that are so rich and so powerful, but that they want to make a woman uncomfortable. This isn't about that he want he just wanted to to get jerked off because by the way you got 221 billion dollars you can you can pay to get many sex workers to come and you sure. have access when you're that level of of all of the bullshit right yep. so the thing that that upsets me is that you're preying on people because you want them to be abused by your power he wanted that woman to go well i feel like i have to because that was what her position was. And by the way, totally get it. Totally understandable. Yeah, You're working for that company on that plane. You feel like, well, this insanely rich and powerful man is asking me to do this. I can completely understand how someone would be like, well, I guess this might, must be part of the job. And then thank God she said no when she was uncomfortable. But that's Good hard too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The fact, again... I, I, that's the shit that I can't stand because if it was just about getting off, then any of these guys would just hire sex workers and, and they would all be everybody's winning, but it's not that because the sex worker has agency and is agreeing to do it. And that's not yeah. the turn on the turn on is making someone feel uncomfortable is, is making someone feel manipulated by your power and money. And I think that is the grossest, darkest, most pathetic fucking common trait that we see now we see that also with men by the way who don't have this level of of wealth but have oh, yeah. have you know obviously some amount of wealth but i just think it's it's truly so disgusting it's so disgusting it's when the turn on because again you can pay a sex worker to to work act out a million different scenarios for you what do you want there's somebody who'll do it and who'll do it Correct. completely of their own volition, which, by the way, if yeah. everybody's in agreement, ha have fun. No, but I'm not here 100%. to judge it. I'm here to judge it when you're pushing someone into doing something that they don't want to do. And that's the part that is something that I just feel like we see so often in general with, with even again, with men far less rich and powerful. It's that the turn on is is manipulating the woman. The turn on is making the woman uncomfortable. The turn on is yeah. seeing how far you can push someone to do something that they don't want to do. And that to me is like it's gross. It's so gross. It's so so gross. Um the fact that he hired an HR person who said I've never been sexually harassed, I must not be hot enough proves that that was the person that was right for the job for him because uh that's somebody that seems to be really pushing the same kind of lines that he aligns himself with. Correct. So great hire on his part there because that person really aligned with, with his kind of uh, hmm. purview. Um, okay. Elon Musk telling Ghislaine Maxwell, I always say her name wrong, but I'm just going to keep saying Ghislaine because it, it is what it is. Well, I won't lie. As I went to say it and I hesitated because I was like, fuck, how do you say that again? It's been a beat. I know. But, but I always I say care Ghislaine about her as a person, I, so I'm okay with exactly. Saying her I don't correctly. care if it's disrespectful. Yeah. Um, the fact that he was talking to her that he believed we're all in a simulation. Go with me on a side tangent here for a second. I Please. did hear someone speak about this and about the idea that we're all in a simulation. And yeah. I know what you're thinking. Oh, has Lauren Ash gone off the deep end? Hear me out on this. Mm. The the theory being that humans get to a point. This is how it was explained to me. I'm sure you probably already know this. People probably already know this. I won't believe her too long. But it was just one of those moments where I went, hmm? <laughs> it was like humans get to a point where where whatever, where where humanity is killed off. And because we have the technology to run these like giant programs, the idea being is like, well, let's see, let's run these simulations and see which one works out that we don't destroy ourselves. Well, it's not this one. <laughs> And well, this is again, this is how this was explained to me. And then it was like, this is the one where the reality show host gets to be president and then tries to stage a coup or whatever you want to call it, et cetera. Like, mm. like, yeah, no, we're in, we're not in one of the good ones. You know what I mean? Like we're, we're not, not in the one where it works out. No. And we're not in one of the fun ones either. But it was uh. when it was explained that way, I was like, there is something interesting about that. Do I think in the grand scheme of anything being possible, that's possible? I do. How would we ever know? We sure. would never know. Um, 
and again, much like we're saying, I don't know that this is the one that you want to be in is the point. Uh, so Elon coming into Tesla was made CEO probably by force. Immediately I wrote down, well, this is revenge for Zip2. He was taken wow. out of that position at Zip2. And this is the kind of yes. man who would hold a grudge and then go, I'm going to hurt somebody else because I was hurt when that happened to me. Oh, I, I could see that. It also made me think, of the movie pass documentary, which if people haven't watched, I highly recommend where it talks about movie pass, which was this, um, app long story short, you could go and see as many movies as you wanted in a month for the monthly subscription cost. It was like wildly popular, successful, et cetera, in the United States. Sure. Um, well, in the documentary, you learned that the company was started by a black man and the, who then brought in a second black man and they kind of built it together. And then of course, someone decided, oh, well, we should probably have this older white guy come in here to really run things. And did they push out those two black men? They absolutely did. They absolutely Ugh. did. Uh, and I don't think that's a spoiler because we all saw that coming. Um, and also there's a lot of details. I highly recommend that do documentary because it, it, well, I'd recommend it if you want to slam your head against a wall metaphorically, because it's a lot of that same kind of theme. Uh, um, yeah. Okay. I've just got so many things I want to talk about. Um, the fact that he threatened to take away stock options if people unionized. This is a Disney villain. Um, you saying he looked like a Fortnite avatar made me laugh out loud. I don't even really know Fortnite, but I know it enough to know it's those blocks. And that's funny. Yeah. Um, all right. I got to talk about the animal testing thing real quick. Uh, the fact that, because here, here's the thing. Here's the thing. And, and I'm going to, I've, I know too much about this. I, I've i read too much over the years. Um, here's the bottom line. It's all corrupt. It's all corrupt. So again, like you were saying, they got greenlit to start human trials. Yeah. I, I'm not sure if this would go through the FDA specifically or if it would be a branch of the FDA or if there was a couple of them. But, but by the way, super corrupt. Everything is viable. Everything is purchasable. Mm. So to me, when we hear that they're doing this ex this experimentation on animals, some of which aren't going well because people are feeling rushed, which we know tracks with his MO. Um, and then they're like, well, we're not really keeping track. My question is, again, what are the experiments you're doing then? Because the whole purpose of animal experimentation, which, by the way, is a hot button topic for myself um, and, and how I align on that ethically. Sure. My qu question is, is that if you don't have a plan where it's like we're going to take 100 monkeys for example and i want to specify again also i don't fully support this i i'm really of course born. but let's say if you can't write down a plan that says we're going to take 100 monkeys and insert 100 chips and then see how many it works in sure. that's a solid model for a uh, you know hypothesis that you're testing not one that i love just saying when you're saying well we don't know how many died because we didn't keep track of them then there is absolutely no basis in what you're doing you're playing, you're playing and you're mucking and you're destroying lives of animals for some unknown reason. Because, yeah. well, by the way, it doesn't even matter because you've got greenlit for the human funding, by the way, which doesn't feel like you had the goods to back it up. And I'm certain he just bought it. Everything's got a price. Oh, yeah. And again, it's like the idea, I just cannot let go, the idea that it's like, oh, we don't keep track of the amount of animals that die then none of your results hold any water. Because again, it's like you have to be able to have documentation of, I don't have to explain this any further. It's absolute insanity is my point. And my heart breaks for all of those animals because that is completely um, avoidable. Uh, yeah, it makes sense that they there was no evidence of animal welfare issues found, but then of course it was found out that like, well, maybe they were hiding it. Of course, again, this man is worth $221 billion. Everything is yeah. everything is hideable. This man is above the law. Um, the fact that he spent $44 billion on Twitter, when you think about, again, the fact that $6 billion could solve world hunger and he spent $44 billion on a dumb app yeah. to, like, prove a point. Um, the fact that, again, $44 billion, I'd argue you could live on that for the rest of your life. Oh, yeah. I can't. I absolutely can't. It's interesting, though... That this Tallulah wife of his seemingly is very right-leaning, uh, extremely right-leaning, by the way. Um, we're not talking just like an old-school Republican here. We're talking um, much further than that. Uh, 
it's interesting that she is that way and that he has become so that way. Not that I feel like he wasn't necessarily always like this, but I always find it sure. interesting when somebody has someone in their life that has a very strong viewpoint and then they kind of start adopting that viewpoint. Yeah, I get that. Um, all right, I'm almost through, I promise. I just, this really got me fired up on so many levels. Uh, this whole, this whole situation about, well, 2% of his wealth, $6 billion could solve world hunger. He asked for a plan. You know what? That I'm okay with. I'm okay with that. Yeah. Show me the, sh lay it out for me. He's a business guy. Sh run the numbers for me. Show it how it's going to work. What it's I a love ton of money. It, yeah. It's a ton of money. What I love is they said, thank you so much. Here you go. We've worked it out. This is how it's going to go. And he ghosts. He ghosts. He doesn't. Yeah. He doesn't even have the, 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 the decency to say, thank you so much for your work. I'm going to allot my funds elsewhere. I don't respect that, that choice, but I would respect you at least not ghosting. I'm sorry. Are we on a fucking dating app here? It's a charitable organization trying to solve world hunger and you ghost? Again, this is, the, you know who he is? He's fucking Gaston. He's Gaston from Beauty and the fucking Beast. That's who he is. He's just not as attractive. I was I was going to say I, I was hurt by the comparison, but that's <laughs> only because I had a very visceral reaction to meeting Gaston in person. Of course. Um, but yeah. He wants... He is. He wants the little woman at home yep. uh, rubbing his feet. I'm trying to think of his lines. Uh, his 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 latest kill roasting on the fire. Yep. A couple exactly. of kids in the yard. I'm just desperately racking my brain for what does he say to her in that moment. Um, but yeah, he absolutely, that's the mentality. It is because when I start, when I was going through my mind in the, on the moment about, cause I was going to say again, he was a Disney villain and I was like, no, yeah. use more specificity. He's a specific one. I'm like, he's not like Jafar. J Jafar sure. is, is far more, I know I'll say it intelligent to me. Yes. Um, you know, he's not like Ursula who, by the way, some could argue just had a bad, had a bad set of hands dealt to her. You know, oh, yeah. Who's the know, real villain in that story? Well, listen, there's a true crime and cocktails uh, behind the music or no, what were we calling it? True crime and fairy tales episode where we really yeah. get into that. Um, but yeah, to me, it's like he's got that bravado of like wanting to be popular, wanting to be liked, wanting to have the like hottest tiny little wife and all the children and is just a bad guy. No oh, yeah. redeeming quality is just a bad guy. Because again, to me, you have the ability to solve world hunger. You you ghost. It's so appalling to me. And then he's giving that money to this bullshit Musk Foundation, which isn't even meeting the minimums to qualify as a charitable organization. Like, yes, it is a tax shelter. I'm not even going to say allegedly. It absolutely is. And by the way, the joke is he's not even using it properly. Because here's the other thing. Someone worth that much money is going to have to pay so much money in taxes, of course, and as they should. This is why the billionaire tax is supposed to exist. Um, if he gave the $6 billion, that offsets his taxes. This is what I will never understand, right? Because it's like he's so greedy that he's like, no, I got to take that $6 billion and put it back into a bank account owned by me. I'm going to do donate, get the tax break, and then I still have the money. Yeah. That's that's nuts. I think part of it might be because they were like, hey, you could do this with that money. And I think he felt like he was being like shown up or something. And he was and then he was like, oh, yeah, I'll do it if you can like provide a thing not expecting them to actually do it. Right. And then they provide a thing and he's like, oh shit, but does it feels if he gives them the money, he'd look like an idiot. Well, you look like an idiot by not doing it. A hundred percent. The last thing I wanted to comment on very, very quickly is the blue check mark thing. And I'm going to uh, tell you why. Yeah. I'm going to tell you why. As someone who is in the public eye, who, by the way, had to work really hard to get those blue check marks because when they first existed, like it, it took a lot of work and you had to show a lot of proof and like really 
Instagram too. Like it was really hard to get verified on things. And I know what you're saying, Lauren, why does it matter? Does it matter to me in the grand scheme of my life? Not at all. No. Here's why it matters. It matters because there are so many people creating fake accounts that have your okay. face and your name, making them say a lot of terrible shit. And yep. the only safeguard that is in place to protect people was those blue check marks. So that then if somebody created an account like you and it said something horrific, you could always say, is it a verified account? Then it's not me. Yeah. When he took that away from people, when he took that away from people who are, are in the public eye, et cetera, by the way, no one tried to steal my identity or to create one of those things until after the fact. And then I've had a few times people like create these accounts that aren't me. Mm. Now, often I'm very lucky that we've caught them quick enough, but like it's such a violating feeling when you have the platform of the internet in front of you for someone to make your face say something that isn't you. That's really awful or, or bigoted, et cetera. Like it's, I, I can't describe what that level of violation feels like because suddenly you're going, well, now it's my unverified account versus that unverified account. Right. And ultimately it's like the news cycle is so fast that if the news breaks, that it's like Lauren Ash said this horrific thing. I may eventually be able to say, I, that's not me and I have proof, but then it's already too late. And people are remembering that you were connected to something that was terrible. The fact now that anybody can pay to get one is so silly to me because it takes away the entire purpose, in my opinion, of why it even existed to begin with. I feel like people put this value on it. Like it was like proving that, that, that you are who you really are is important for everybody. And now, by the way, Sure, I can understand that uh, every human has, it's valid that you are represented as you want to represent yourself. A and listen, look, I, I mean, I, I, I understand what he's preying upon, but when it existed before and it was like, this is a tool for people who are in the public eye who have a vested interest in making sure that anything with their face and name on it is what they're saying. I feel right. like we all got it. We were all like, oh, this makes sense. And there may be some people that wanted it or whatever, for whatever reason, but then he skewed it. So it was like, well, you know, why are these people so important? You're just as important. Of course, we're all equal and we're all as important as people. But he's preying upon this thing that never existed until he said it did, in my opinion. Yeah. And the thing that was, was invented with the intention of making sure that you knew that that was really who that person was has now been taken away and its purpose is just about what clout. I don't even know what you would say it's about. Yeah. I don't know. I, I just refuse. <laughs> yeah. To, to pay, especially, um, Twitter, which I don't really use that often, but I just, I'm like, no, I'm not playing your game, sir. No, I can't. No. Well, on that note, Christy Oxborough, fantastic work as always. Uh, really, we we slogged through. And again, as as she yeah. stated earlier, there is so much about Elon Musk by the day. Oh, yeah. By the day. So there's mm -hmm. going to be things that weren't mentioned. And that is simply because we've already spent two full episodes on this man and we refuse to give him a second more. Never again. Um, not interested. Uh, but I think you did a great job of really doing a good overview of, of, of highlighting his lowlights. And we thank you for your work now and always highlighting his lowlights oh, fuck you're good <laughs> listen i i used to be verified on twitter uh and we thank you <laughs> dear listeners for joining us on this wild ride if you haven't already give us a follow on instagram facebook and youtube at true crime and cocktails on twitter at not detectives and of course if you want some additional uh content from us go over to patreon.com slash true crime and cocktails we have bonus episodes four bonus episodes a month over there it is a good value um a live q a you can vote in the poll there's all sorts of things check it out if you're interested and great news True Crew merch, the official and only place to get True Crime and Cocktails merch, is back, baby. As of today, shout out to friend of the podcast and one of my dearest oldest friends, Ryan Anderson, who, guess what? He listens to the show. He was like, you got some issues? Let me help you. And he walked me through some tech stuff that has helped me. Um, it's taken my own tech ability to the next level. So the only caveat I have is please be patient. I've, I've created some automations 
I can't believe that I've even said that statement. Um, I've created some automations to try and protect us from having fraud ha happen again in the future. I don't know what it looks like yet. Perhaps somebody might get flagged that shouldn't get flagged. It's not going to do anything except pause the order. But my point is this. Please be patient. Uh, if, if there is any issues moving forward, I'm really just trying to get ahead of it. If there is, I don't foresee there being any. But I'm very excited that the merch store is back and we're not going to let the terrorists win. Shout out, Mr. Anderson. Hell yeah. Beautiful. I know. What a gem. What a gem of a human and such a help to me. I I, I can't thank him enough. Uh, we all benefit from this. Um, but on that note, Christy, do you want to tell the people about next week's episode? Great news. Not Elon Musk. Yeah. We can... Gone. Yeah, or we're like all a, taking a shower, for sure. Like, like a casino... Uh, someone at a casino table, we just... A dealer. And we're we showing our hands and they're clean. A dealer. I couldn't think of the word dealer. It's time to say goodnight, Christy. Uh, <laughs> on the next episode of True Crime and Cocktails, Linda Chen. Can't wait to find out about this. Don't know about this case and can't wait to learn as we always do. Christy, do you want to say goodnight to the people? Good night, Olympic diver Tom Daly. Oh, yes. And good night to the Canadian gal swimmers. We're so proud of you.